So now as we conclude our discussion on interphase, which we established as the longest part of, cell, of the cell cycle, 90% of the cell cycle is devoted to interphase. Why? Because it's the, re, it's the phase at which the cell is doing most of its life's job. It's doing the growth. It's doing the DNA synthesis. It's doing the metabolic activities and high rates of metabolic activities. We established the first two phases of interphase as G1, the first gap phase, and the S phase, the synthesis phases, which we duplicate DNA in preparation for and our conclusion of interphase, the second gap phase, otherwise known as G2. So now, some things that are, have been established already. Once we start the second gap phase, we now have two times as much DNA as we started with. In the G1 phase, we had a certain amount of DNA, now we have double that amount of DNA. This means that we're going to now also have a bigger nucleus because we need to have a nucleus that can support this uh, doubling of DNA. The DNA itself is still in a chromatin form, so say still chromatin in its uh, sort of shape and structure. There's still some metabolic activity going on within the cell in preparation for the division, so we still have metabolic activity. And overall, what we have is uh, tons of mitosis prep, actually. Um, by mitosis prep, what I simply mean is that we're going to have a lot of protein synthesis, specifically the proteins that are going to be involved in splitting the cell. So we're prepping for mitosis, prepping for that M phase by making the proteins necessary for that M phase. So that's going to be um, one part of the story of the second gap phase, of G2 phase. In addition, we actually also have one or more nuclei being uh, usually seen during this phase. One or more nuclei, nucleoli, excuse me, nucleoli. So remember, the nucleolus is the inner portion of the nucleus, and that portion was responsible for what? Creating ribosomes. So we actually increase ribosome production. Why do you think we're increasing ribosome production? Because we're trying to create mitosis prep, and we're trying to create more proteins. And if we're creating more proteins, we need to create more protein centers, protein builders, and ribosomes are centers of protein synthesis. So we create more nucleoli, and if we have more nucleoli, we then have more ribosomes. So again, lots of protein synthesis happening during second gap phase. In addition, we still have the nuclear envelope. It's still there. It's still very nicely um, structured. So it's still part of the um, overall structure of the cell. We'll see once it starts dissipating in the next couple of phases of mitosis, actually. And then the last point we want to talk about is the idea of a centrosome. This is a very important, I think, take-home message of the second gap phase. Something you should definitely understand about the second gap phase is the development of this centrosome. So the centrosome is simply uh, a part of a cell. It's actually a cell organelle that's responsible and produces mitotic spindles. What we mean by mitotic spindles are simply microtubules. And microtubules do a very important job. They are the specific structures that are going to literally pull apart those sister chromatids and bring them to separate sides of the cell. When we see a cell splitting, when we see the nucleolus developing in two different cells, we have to make sure that the genetic material is evenly pulled away and put on two opposite sides before anything else can happen. That's what the centrosome's job is basically to do. Produce the spindles necessary for that pull pulling apart of those cells, uh, excuse me, pulling apart of those chromosomes that we are going to condense in the next couple of phases. More specifically, the centrosome consists actually of a pair of centrioles. So a centrosome is the actual organelle, but that organelle consists of a pair of centrioles. These pair of centrioles will have a 9 by 3 microtubule structure. So I'll write each has a 9 sets of 3 microtubules. Remember that term, remember that terminology, 9 by 3. It's just something that often shows up on exams. Whenever you see 9 by 3, always imagine microtubules and always imagine centrioles and always imagine centrosome. The 9 by 3 structure develops during the second gap phase because the centrosome develops during the second gap phase. All you have to understand is that this is going to create um, a sort of a structure that looks like this. There's going to be a cylinder-like structure. This is a centriole and this is a centriole. What you have to imagine between both of these is that they are at a right angle. So we're going to actually write that down. This pair of centrioles, these, this represents a centrosome, let's say, centrosome, with a pair of centrioles, one centriole here and one centriole here. Within each of them, there's a nine sets of three microtubules specifically. 
Um, uh, excuse me, three sets of nine microtubules. Don't care too much about that. Just remember nine by three. That's something that shows up on exam sometimes. And remember that they are arranged at a right angle structure to each other. Okay. So overall, that's the structure. Don't worry too much about that. Worry more so about the idea that this is where we have the mitotic spindles, where we have the actual structure that will pull apart those sister chromosomes, those sister chromatids, excuse me. Um, in addition, what we have during the second gap phase is the idea that the centrioles themselves actually duplicate. The centrioles duplicate. And why do they duplicate? Because we need to create two separate centrosomes. We need to create two separate centrosomes because when we have the cell and we have it divided, we need to have a set over here that's going to produce those mitotic spindles to help connect to the chromosomes on this side. And we need to have another set of uh, another centrosome set to produce the mitotic spindles that will be produced out this way. So that the chromosomes that are over here and over here can each be pulled apart to their separate poles. So we duplicate the centrosome. Usually a cell has one centrosome, but it's duplicated during what? During the second gap phase, because now we're truly preparing for mitosis. We're truly preparing for the splitting of this DNA genetic material, and we're going to be talking about now um, the mitotic phase, the M phase. So overall, we've looked at interphase. Interphase is the phase that consists of 90% of the cell cycle. It consists of G1. G1 was just the first gap phase in which we had no DNA synthesis, and we had lots of metabolic activity. We then moved into S phase, which was otherwise known as synthesis phase. This is where we have the duplication of genetic material, the duplication specifically of DNA and the proteins necessary for this duplication. And after the duplication has happened, we establish sister chromatids, two identical copies of DNA that are arranged and connected at their centromere, that central location of the chromosome. And then we also have kinetic cores. Why do we have kinetic cores? Because we need to attach these mitotic spindles to something, and that's where we attach them. And then we finally concluded our interphase in this video by looking at the second gap phase. The second gap phase consists of a phase that will end with double the amount of DNA and these further consequences. We will have a lot of protein synthesis occurring. So why do we have that? Because we have increased nucleoli production, thus we have increased um, amount of ribosomes, thus we have more protein synthesis because ribosomes do protein synthesis. We still have a nuclear envelope, but most importantly, I think about the second gap phase, the centrosome. The centrosome is an area that has a pair of centrioles that are going to produce the microtubules, that are going to produce the mitotic spindles that pull apart those sister chromatids. We also have duplication of this region to have two centrosomes as an overall consequence. So overall, we have established interphase. It's now time to talk about M phase or the mitotic phase.